the college football pick them against the spread for week number six. Uh, it is brought to you by BetUS, of course, and we also have a new sponsor. Let me go on and tell you about uh, Valtimeri Surf Company. These guys are awesome. They've got great shirts. Uh, I have worn the shirts. You can go check them out over at uh, valtimerisurfco.com. It's V-A-L-T-A-M-E-R-I-S-U-R-F-C-O.com. Uh, I will have a link in the description for that, so make sure that you go and check it out. But yeah, uh, you can use the code Gary10, G-A-R-Y-1-0, for 10% off of your order. Uh, these guys are great. I mean, they've got uh, super soft, high-quality shirts. They're a lot of fun to wear. It's uh, it's basically like the laid-back vibe of a beach town uh, along with your college town. So they've got all the different ones for whatever the team is, Tuscaloosa, uh, Starkville, uh, Columbus, etc., Go and check it out, Valtimeri Surf Company. There's a link in the description. Use that promo code Gary10. It's going to get you 10% off of your order. So go ahead and make sure that you check that out. Those guys are phenomenal. Uh, they've treated me well, and they will treat you well also. Uh, but if you if they don't have your uh, college town, basically, they will do a custom one for you. Just email them. They will detail it. They will get it knocked out for you. Very easy to do. These guys are great. Um, very easy to do. So go ahead, sign up. Again, promo code Gary10 over there. All right, let's dive into these games. We've got a lot to get into with it. Uh, should be should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun with these. These are the games that I did not hit on the BetUS College Football Show. Of course, we hit 18 games over there this week. I'm going to hit 12 here, and I'm going to kind of do it in rapid-fire fashion. So let's start off with number one. Louisville heads to Virginia, and Virginia, currently a three-point home dog. The total sits at 51. It's at 12 p.m. Eastern time on the ACC Network. Louisville, two and six against the spread in their last eight against Virginia. Uh, Virginia, one and five against the spread in their last six overall. Louisville, however, not much better, two and five, or excuse me, yeah, two and five uh, against the spread in their last seven. Louisville has not been great, uh, obviously, that's been highlighted by the fact that they lost to Boston College last week, who is just awful. If you look at the numbers on the screen here, um, Louisville, I mean, my numbers have them favored by 9.44. Now, part of the problem here is that, man, uh, I, I just, I don't know about, I, I just wonder. I just wonder about um, what they can actually accomplish. Here, we'll turn a little music on in the background. Um, Malik Cunningham not playing in this game. Like, they, there's a big possibility of that. If they don't have him, I'm not sure what to make of this team. So, I can I can look at the stats all I want to, but it's not going to tell me what I need to know. Uh, Virginia can't pass the football. Their offensive line is atrocious. They're number 120 in havoc rate allowed. Uh, Louisville's actually pretty good at that on, on defense. They're number 55 there uh as far as stopping the run like virginia is pretty good at running the football louisville can't stop the run they're num number 99 in ppa uh per rush um even knowing all of this like looking at what louisville does on offense looking at how louisville runs the ball etc i i'd still think louisville is the better football team i'm gonna bank on malik cunningham actually playing in this game so i'm gonna take louisville to cover the three here uh, but man if he doesn't play, I mean, this, this is a coin flip if I've ever seen one. And I might actually lean towards Virginia. So, yeah, that's that's a weird spot. Very, very weird spot. All right. Now, uh, so, yes, I will take Louisville to cover three against Virginia this weekend. Next on the docket, we'll go on and pull this thing up. Indiana heads to Michigan. Excuse me. It's Michigan at Indiana. Da, 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 da. Um yeah, Michigan won 3-1 and one against the spread of their last five against Indiana. Uh, Indiana is a 22.5-point home dog here. The total is 59.5. Uh, it's 12 p.m. Eastern time on Fox, by the way. Michigan 4-0 and against the spread, their last four on the road. Uh, along with that, Indiana 1-4 and against the spread. Uh, da -da -da -da. Nope, 1-7 and against the spread in their last eight at home. It's not been good. Indiana plays fast, like really, really fast. And they're not exactly super efficient on offense. Uh, so more opportunities, I think, for Michigan to be able to score points here than normal. 
I, this I, I've got thirty point two eight here. Um, I don't know that I would trust that number, um, but at the same time, uh, why would you not? Like I think Michigan got tired of Indiana playing close games with them, and this team uh, looked really good early against Iowa last week. I think they're going to be able to do the same thing at Indiana. I, I really think that they are going to be able to shut down this offense uh, because the only thing that they've really got, uh, as far as Indiana goes, is DJ Matthews, who uh, has been dealing with, you know, he's a little banged up again. Um, they're not great passing the ball, you know, number 105 in passing success rate, and they're number 52 in passing explosiveness. So they either hit big plays or they don't do anything. And that's... That's tricky because I don't think you're going to get a lot of big plays against Michigan. So go ahead and give me Michigan to cover the 22 here. I I like this Wolverines team. Like, no, they're not the most talented bunch in the world, but they got some good chemistry. I like Blake Corum running the ball. Uh, this seems like a really, really good team. So I will certainly ride with the Wolverines. Moving along, Missouri heads to Florida. And Florida is an 11-point favorite. Of course, latest line over at BetUS. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Going to pull up the stats here and show you what I got. Uh, I'm almost right there. I mean, I'm almost right on the dot. 10.39 here. Um, And I'll tell you, I'm not sure what to make here. The favorite in this matchup, you know, head-to-head, is 5-2 against the spread in the last seven. Missouri, 7-3 against the spread in their last 10 games, which I think some people would be surprised about. Uh, but along with that, Florida is 2-6 and six against the spread in their last eight at home. Now, that does include a lot of last year's games in which, man, the Mullen era just fizzled out in such a quick way. It was so ridiculous. But I, I look at this matchup now, and I, I see ways that Florida could absolutely lose this game, right? There are There's ways they could do it. Uh, these two teams are not great as far as PPA margin, which is uh, basically an efficiency metric. How good, how good are you on offense? And defense, um, and not not good for either one of these teams. <laughs> number ninety eight for Florida, number one twelve for Missouri. But what I'm looking at is Missouri's defense, number forty five uh, in defensive PPA per drive. Uh, they're they're pretty good against the pass. They're pretty good against the rush. And this is over the last four games. That includes the game against Kansas State. I, I'm I'm a little bit shocked at this, honestly. Um, their offense is putrid. They can't run the ball. Uh, they can't throw the ball. They did have a little bit of success last week against Georgia, uh, but overall, I just I don't trust I don't trust the players on that team. I don't trust that offense. Um, I'm going to go Florida here. Give me Florida to cover 11. That's three straight favorites that I'm taking. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. But um, I just don't think that Missouri has a whole lot left in the tank. I mean, after such an emotional, uh, just bad loss at Auburn where they just gave the game away multiple times. They came back, they fought hard against Georgia, and they got beat in the closing seconds to the number one team in the country. I I think that I would actually trust Florida to be able to get this done here. I think they're going to be able to run the ball. Um, and, and that's actually the weakest part of Missouri's defense is their run defense. Uh, they're number 32 in success rate. They're number 52 in PPA per rush. I think Anthony Richardson will have some things up his sleeve for this and they'll be able to move the ball on the ground. I like Florida to cover the 11 here. So I guess uh, go Gators. We'll see. We will see. Moving along, Purdue at Maryland. And the Terps are a three-point favorite, of course, latest number over at BetUS. Uh, This is 12 p.m. Eastern time game on the Big Ten Network. And I'm I'm really intrigued in this one. I want to know what to expect from these teams. Uh, going to pull up the stats here. Uh, of course, going to tell you the trends. Maryland 4-0 against the spread in their last four. Uh, of course, that's this season. Uh, but they are 2-5 and five against the spread in their last seven at home. Uh, Purdue is 10-4 and four against the spread in their last 14 against teams with a winning record. They, they tend to show up in these spots, and they did it last week with a win over Minnesota. I was a little surprised to see Purdue, after a big win in Minneapolis, come out as a dog at Maryland. However, this Maryland team has been impressive. You see a bunch of green on that screen, right? Green means good, red means bad. So I I look at this, and I, 
I, I'll tell you this. I, I like Jeff Brom quite a bit. I don't trust Mike Loxley yet. I know that the offense is good, right? I mean, they're number 10 in field position. Uh, they've got a big advantage there. Uh, number 24 in points per scoring opportunity. They are, uh, however, they're number 106 in scoring opportunities per game. And part of that has to do with their explosive rate, right? Uh, they are number 41 in passing explosiveness. Uh, they're number 59 in PPA per pass, number 34 in PPA per rush. Uh, but I like this I like this defense from Purdue. Like, they're number four in defensive PPA per drive. They find ways to stop people. Uh, their offense has not been great. Uh, obviously, it hurts when you didn't have O'Connell out there, and he was hurt last week. So the offense couldn't do everything that they wanted to do. But the defense stood up to Minnesota. Uh, why wouldn't they be able to do the same thing here? So I don't necessarily trust Loxley. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to take Purdue to cover the three here. I think they can win the game outright. Uh, so I will certainly take the three here. Uh, which, by the way, these are not my official plays. The official plays are over at the BetUS College Football Show. Make sure that you go and check that out. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we knock those out. Uh, subscribe to that channel. We're almost at 10,000 over there. Uh, if you're not subscribed over here, go ahead and subscribe over here as well. Because that helps out a ton for both of them. Uh, and the show, I mean this show. Winning Cures Everything is brought to you by BetUS, so make sure that you check that out. So, uh, moving right along. Oh, yeah, Purdue to cover the three. Going ahead. Texas Tech heads to Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State, and the Cowboys are a nine-point favorite, of course, latest line at BetUS. Uh, it's 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. I'm interested. I'm very interested because any game where Donovan Smith is a quarterback – uh, yeah, I, I think it could be tricky, right? This is the fifth game against a top 25 team that Texas Tech has already played this season. That's a lot. Uh, now, you can look at it and be like, all right, well, they can't have anything left in the tank. Or you can say, well, they're really battle-tested. So, going to Stillwater isn't going to do anything to them. I guess I could understand that. Um, Texas Tech is 5-1 and one against the spread against Oklahoma State in their last six. Um, along with that... Let's see, Texas Tech 7-1 and one against the spread following a spread loss. So the last eight times they have not covered, they followed it up uh, with a win in seven of those. Um, along with that, Oklahoma State 10-1-1 one one against the spread their last 12 against the Big 12. They had a big win against Baylor last week. Defense did some interesting things, but when I look at this team, I still got questions. Uh, a lot of that, like, they had a kick return for a touchdown. Like, obviously, this means that they got playmakers. Mike Gundy is definitely letting it fly on offense again, where he had definitely calmed that down quite a bit over the past couple of years when he had uh, Knowles as the defense coordinator. Uh, Derek Mason is the defense coordinator now. Um, and the defense is, is good. I mean, number 54 in defensive PPA per drive. Uh, but there's there's still questions here. I mean, there's still things that uh, that you should look at. My number has this at Oklahoma State by eh, almost 8, 7.76. Uh, the line is at 9. It opened at 10. It's come down a little bit. Uh, both of these teams play fast. A lot of plays per game. The uh, The total on this one sits at 68.5. I think it's going to get pointsy. I think it's going to be a little crazy. Like Donovan Smith is the most high-variance player in the country, but I think that Spencer Sanders over his career has been just as high-variance. If you get a good Spencer Sanders which is what we've gotten for the majority of this season, then you should be fine, and your offense is going to be explosive, etc. If you don't, you're going to be turning the ball over in your own territory, all kinds of things that would really make Joey McGuire happy. I will say that. So I look at this. I think there's a chance this could be a pretty tight game. If I'm getting near double digits, yeah, I'm going to take the Red Raiders. I'll take Texas Tech plus nine here. Seems like the better play, the better uh, chance of happening is them keeping this within a touchdown. I like it. I absolutely like it. I mean, they lost by, what, nine last week? I, yeah, I could see them losing by nine here. I could see them losing by a touchdown. So that, that's what I'm thinking. I think uh, Texas Tech plus the nine is the way that I'm going to go on this. Moving along, Auburn heads to Georgia. And the Bulldogs are a 29.5 point favorite, latest line at BetUS. This one is interesting. It's 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. And it, there's all kind of numbers that favor Georgia in this one. Um, they are, let's see, Auburn is 0 7 against the spread, their last seven against Georgia. 
Uh, Auburn is 1-5 and five against the spread in their last six games overall. And on top of that, uh, Georgia is 1-5 and five against the spread in their last six at home. So the numbers sometimes get a little too out of whack. I don't think so here. Uh, Georgia has looked very pedestrian the past two weeks. Auburn has put up a fight in games where they actually thought they could win, and they did get a win over Missouri. But, I mean, it took every ounce of every bit of magic that they had inside of Jordan-Hare to be able to get that one. And then they come out and they score the first 17 points against LSU. Had the highest win rate probability, excuse me, the third highest win rate probability of a team that didn't win against LSU last week. Lost 21-17, to should have won the game. And now they're going to Georgia after Georgia has come out looking kind of bad the last two weeks. Lost their number one ranking, etc. Parker, over in the BetUS show, talks about Georgia being bored. I think that's possible. However, uh, I don't think they will be bored in this one. This is a rivalry. This one means something. I would I would go with Georgia to cover the 29 and a half here. I know that that's lost a little bit of value because that thing was at 28 not that long ago. Um, Georgia should be able to run the ball here. Their PPA per pass is number 48 in the country, and that's what Auburn is actually pretty good at uh, at defending. They're number 24 in PPA per pass. The Auburn offense does nothing good. That They can't throw the ball well. They can't run the ball well. And you look at that against that Georgia defense, and I just, again, on these sheets, red is bad. Green is good. I don't know how Auburn hangs in this one. Um I don't like betting these big numbers because you're banking on something to not be too crazy, right? Like, you could end up with a backdoor cover very easily with something like that. You have to have Georgia actually care about the game, etc. I think they come out and treat this one kind of like that Oregon game. They come out firing on all cylinders. They're at home. It's a prime spot against a rival. I think they come out ready to bang. So, yeah, give me Georgia to cover the 29 and a half on that one. Moving along, Washington heads to Arizona State. Another Pac-12 game. Washington, of course, was, uh, is it safe to say, embarrassed in the Rose Bowl last week against UCLA? I mean, DTR just carved them up. Well, now you face a, uh, what's what's the best way to say it? I guess like a poor man's version of DTR in Emory Jones, who's not, who's not quite as good. He's not as good at, at passing the ball. He's not as good at running the ball. But he does kind of some of the same things. Now, this team put up a fight against USC last week. Arizona State did. Uh, And now, Arizona State is a 14-point underdog at home with a total of 57. Uh, That's the latest line over at BetUS. And, yeah, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on the Pac-12 network here. Uh, Looking at the trends, let's go on and pull up the, uh, the stats so that you guys can see those. Interesting. Interesting indeed, of course. Uh, we have got Washington 0-7 in their last seven trips. That's against the spread at Arizona State. Washington is 4-1 and against the spread thus far this year. Of course, their first loss came last week. And, of course, Arizona State 5-0 and against the spread in their last five at home against winning teams. Seems like a lot of points, right, 14? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think Washington had some guys that were dinged up on defense last week. Uh, I expect those guys to be back and actually looking pretty decent this week. No, their defense is not anything to write home about. They're number 71 in PPA per drive, or excuse me, 71 PPA per drive defense. Uh, but Arizona State's numbers are just putrid. I mean, they're just not good at all. Uh, they throw the ball nearly 57% of the time, and they're number 95 in PPA per pass. So I, while you can maybe find some explosive plays against this Washington defense, I don't think they're going to be able to. Um, because that, you see on this chart, that's all that they've got is explosive plays. I mean, it's they got passing explosiveness. They got rushing explosiveness. They can maybe take advantage of some stuff that Washington does. But when you are not successful on a down-to-down basis, I don't trust you. I think Washington's offense, you, you scroll this thing down, look at Washington's offense here. You see all that green going up against that defense. Yeah, number 10 PPA per pass offense going up against the number 112 PPA per pass defense. Washington can take advantage of this game. Michael Penix should have a massive, massive game. Uh, I will take Washington to cover the 14. My line even shows it. 
Uh, Washington minus 18.61. I got like four points of value there. Yeah, I'm going to roll with it. So give me Washington to cover 14 on this one. Go Huskies, I guess. <laughs> Ohio State at Michigan State. Uh, this one's this one's interesting, right? Michigan State, a 27-point home underdog. And Mel Tucker uh, has seen better days, my friends, in East Lansing. Yikes on that one. Uh, the latest line, of course, is over at BetUS. Uh, it's 4 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. Ohio State, a 27-point favorite. Ohio State is 5-0 and against the spread their last five against Michigan State. They took it personally back in 2015 when Michigan State came into their house and beat them and ended up going to the playoff. Uh, they are 7-3 and against the spread their last 10 against teams with a losing record. Michigan State, however, 7-1-2 and against the spread in their last 10 at home. Interesting. Interesting. That game last year where they got blown out by Ohio State was actually at the horseshoe. So... You look at some of these stats here, uh, which I didn't pull up on the screen, and I probably should have. My apologies. Uh, I've got Ohio State by a lot. Michigan State is not a good football team. They're just not good at all. Uh, There's nothing that I can find where they have an advantage. Even the things that they're good at, uh, Ohio State's actually better. So, like, you think, all right, well, Michigan State's number 11 in average field position on offense. Well, that's great, unless you're playing the number two average field position defense. It's not not great. Um, I just I can't find any way to keep Michigan State in this ball game. And this isn't like a look ahead spot for Ohio State. And the fact that Mel Tucker has been you know going out on the recruiting trail, etc. This is kind of one of those spots where I think that <laughs> I think Ryan Day may run it up just to prove a point. That's what I'm. That's what I'm curious about. This is Michigan State is a team that wants to start recruiting at the same level as Ohio State, and the way that you curb that is by going out and just whipping them in their own house. Uh, they're getting a lot of their weapons back this week. It feels like uh, they should be awesome. Uh, my number has this at forty, almost forty-one. Yeah, this this could be about as bad as it was last year. It's the number one PPA per pass offense against the number 118 PPA per pass defense. Whew. Yeah, boy. That's crazy. And this is over the last four weeks. It doesn't even include that, that week one game. So, yeah, this is uh, this could get bad. So, give me Ohio State to cover the 27 here. It's under four touchdowns. I know that we lost a bunch of value. I think this thing rose like three points. It, it just wasn't set at the right spot. Just wasn't. So, bottom line there. Moving along, we got four more that we're going to hit before we get out of here. Washington State heads to USC, and USC currently a 12.5 point favorite at home. Interesting, to say the least. Uh, looking at the trends here, uh, the road team in this matchup is 7 and 2 against the spread in the last nine. Uh, Washington State 4 0 against the spread in the last four games. They are 5-2 and two against the spread in their last seven road games, so they do travel pretty well. USC, 2-5 and five against the spread in their last seven games against winning teams. Now, a good portion of that was against teams when Clay Helton was the coach. So, yeah, obviously things went south last year, and even the year before that, they weren't very good. It, this team feels a little bit different, right? Um, my number on this is actually USC by almost 20, so 19.6. Uh... I don't, I don't know how much to trust. I look at what Washington State is doing, and their defense could find ways to maybe slow down Caleb Williams in that bunch. Because I don't know that Caleb Williams and that bunch have really been tested all that well so far this year. Oregon State, of course, played them tough, and then went out the next week and just got bludgeoned by Utah. Uh, and you can say, oh, it's because they had four turnovers against Utah. But they had four turnovers against USC. And USC still had to claw back. Washington State is not intimidated by these guys. Uh, I'm I'm curious about... Because the the USC defense appears to be pretty real against the pass. I just don't know exactly who they've gone up against that is able to throw the ball the way that Cam Ward does. 
Cam Ward still high variance kind of guy. He can throw interceptions as well as touchdowns. It's you don't know exactly what you're going to get. And when you look at like turnover rate, yeah, uh, just terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Um, interceptions per game, uh, as far as the interception rate. Yeah, USC is number one in the country. 7.79% of the passes they defend, they end up intercepting. Uh, Washington State throws an interception on 4.64% of their pass attempts. So that's a way that this thing could get sideways. I mean, you're talking about the number one turnover margin team in the country against the number 100 turnover margin team in the country. That's where it could get tricky. I seem to believe, now I'm going against my number here, I'm going to take Washington State to cover the 12 and a half. I think they find a way to stay in this ball game, keep it close. Uh, I this is a tight spot for USC. They got a big game next week against Utah. That's the one everybody's pointing at. Oh, it's just Wazoo. We're not going to worry with them. We'll be able to handle them, no problem. I think it get tricky. It could get tricky. Ask Oregon about that. So yeah, I will. I will ride with Washington State plus twelve and a half. Next on the board, South Carolina at Kentucky. Kentucky, a six-point favorite. Of course, latest line over at BetUS. This is uh, this is an interesting spot. Interesting spot. This line was at 11.5 about three days ago. And now, I mean, we're not even close. We're, we're under a touchdown now. This thing has blown through key numbers. Um, South Carolina, 1-8 and eight against the spread their last night against Kentucky. Kentucky prides themselves on beating South Carolina. South Carolina is 0-4 against the spread on their last four road games. Kentucky, 6-1-1 against the spread in their last eight games. All of that hinges on Will Levis. Is Will Levis going to actually play in this game? Uh, Matt over at KSR at Kentucky Sports Radio just revealed on Wednesday night that, hey, looks like Will Levis is a game-time decision. Not sure exactly what's going on. Doesn't have to do with the finger that was uh, that was hurt last week against Ole Miss. Uh, this is a, you know, game time decision. We'll see. I'm interested in this big time because I think Spencer Rattler could go in there and have a little bit of success. You look at what Kentucky does, uh, and and they can't run the football. I don't trust whoever the backup is. If you can't throw the football. This is a team that's number 120 in PPA per rush. And that Even after Chris Rodriguez came back last week, I thought maybe he'd be able to help things because he gets a, you know yards after contact. That offensive line still cannot block for him. Like, it's, it's rough. The offensive line is number 107 in offensive line yards. They're number 118 in stuff rate allowed. Uh, and it's not that South Carolina is great at that. Like, don't get me wrong. But, man... Um, the Kentucky defense, number 14 in PPA per pass. But they're number 97 in explosive passing rate allowed. And South Carolina's number four. I think South Carolina can find some ways to score the ball. I, I'm going to trust South Carolina to cover the six here because I think this could be a field goal game. I think it could be really, really tight. I didn't pull it up on the uh, on the screen, did I? Unbelievable. So here's what I was talking about. Uh PPA per pass on offense for Kentucky. Well, if you don't have Will Levis, I don't know how reliable that number is. My number on this already was Kentucky by a point. Not even a point. I mean, it was a really tight line anyway. Um, and when you look at the advantage here, the passing explosiveness for South Carolina. Number four versus number 97. That's something to pay attention to. Just saying. Uh, I think South Carolina can find ways to, to score here. Uh, they're pretty good running the ball. Number six in PPA per rush over the last four weeks. Uh, Kentucky, you know, not great. Uh, not Especially not great with rushing explosiveness. I mean, Ole Miss took advantage of that. Um, I like South Carolina here. I like South Carolina. I think that they'll be able to uh, stay in this ball game. I like them plus the six. I like them plus the 11 and a half. Uh, but, yeah, it's dropped a lot. We lost a lot of value. That's okay. Still going to ride with South Carolina here. Moving right along, we got two more to hit. Da, 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 write down the times. Iowa at Illinois. Illinois is a three and a half point favorite at home. Total of 36 and a half. <laughs> yes. It's two great defenses and two questionable offenses. Uh, and that's putting it nicely. I will say that. 
7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Big Ten Network. Uh, let's go on and, and pull up the stats. Not going to forget to do that again. Good gracious. Uh, yeah, Iowa, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm still concerned about their offense. Uh, now, the question here, Illinois likes to play a lot of man defense. Spencer Peters hadn't been bad against man defenses. Uh, it's when you start throwing out zones where he doesn't really know what to do with the football. So maybe there's a chance that Iowa could actually put up some points. Um, an overplay might be all right here, but these are two very conservative coaches. Um, and let me let me read off the stats here. Let me read off the trends. The road team is 4-0 and against the spread the last four here. Iowa, 7-2-1 and against the spread their last 10 on the road. Illinois, 7-0-1 and against the spread in their last eight against winning teams. They show up in spots like this. Bielema just got a massive win at Wisconsin. I think he would like it just as much if he could get a win over Kirk Ferentz and that bunch. Uh, you know, he's an Iowa guy. Um, but I, I think I think I'm going to trust Illinois here. Their offense is getting better. Number 54 PPA per pass. They're finding ways to get Tommy DeVito the ball out. But I don't think it's that. I think they're going to end up with some short fields. Okay? Because I trust Illinois to not turn the football over. I don't trust Iowa to be able to do anything with the football. Uh, they are, I mean, not not great at all. And, and don't get me wrong. They don't turn the ball over a lot. Uh, but I think they, they can get stopped a lot. Their drives can get stopped. Uh, as far as scoring opportunities per game, they're number 106 in the country on offense is Iowa. Uh, 4.25 scoring opportunities per game. They're number 108 in points per scoring opportunity. So they don't get many opportunities. And even when they do get opportunities, they don't score touchdowns. 3.18 is their average per scoring opportunity. Illinois' defense is number one in that metric. So if you're already bad, now you're going up against the best. That's pretty terrifying. My numbers got it at Illinois by double digits. Yeah, I'm going to ride it. Give me give me the fight in Brett Bielema's. I will take Illinois to cover three and a half. Let's go. Let's go Ryan Walters in that defense. That's what I'm talking about. All right, last game on the board. Oregon heads to Arizona. And the Ducks are a 13.5-point favorite, of course, latest line at BetUS. Oh, the trend's here. My goodness. This is a 9 p.m. Eastern Time game on the Pac-12 Network. Oregon is 1-5 against the spread in their last six at Arizona. Now, obviously, different coaching staffs, all that good stuff. But it's still a trend. Still something to pay attention to. Oregon is 0-5 against the spread in their last five road games. Arizona, 5-1 and one against the spread in their last six at home. I like Jacob Cowing. I like what they're doing. Uh, Arizona's offense, their explosiveness, pretty good. Now, Oregon does defend explosive plays pretty well. Uh, but as far as PPA per pass, Oregon is number 89. Arizona is number 38. Something to pay attention to. A passing success rate, number 23 for Arizona. Oregon's defense, number 115. That is the one thing that they really do not do well. Now, when you look on the other side, this is where it could get out of hand. PPA per rush, Oregon is number one over the last four weeks. Uh, their rushing success rate is number two. Arizona's defense is putrid at it. I mean, they are so bad. Uh, you see the green and the red. It's just not good. Number 115 PPA per rush for Arizona. Number 126 in rushing success rate for Arizona's defense. Uh, field position, Pretty average, pretty normal for both sides. Um, no real advantage. Yes, I know that my number has Oregon minus 18.65, but Bo Nix on the road throws picks. He just does. This thing could get squirrely. This is a Pac-12 after dark game. I think Arizona can stay in this thing. Yeah. Yes. A thousand percent Yes. I don't think that strength of record is right. Number 115 for Arizona. When they've, they've played the number 12 strength of schedule. Maybe I'm wrong. Regardless, I look at this. I think Arizona's got a chance to pull the upset here. Give me Arizona plus 13 and a half. Jaden DeLora and Jacob Cowing will not be denied. That's how I view it. I mean, at number 115 in passing success rate is Oregon. Yeah, they're going to have some success against that Ducks defense. 
I'm going to take them. Give me Arizona, plus 13 and a half. I like it. All right. It's time for us to get out of here. You guys have been absolutely magnificent. I certainly appreciate you all for being here. Go visit BetUS. Go subscribe to the BetUS College Football Show. All the links are in the description. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.